ultimately at the sovereignty of God, God's supreme rule and control over everything because it's all in his hands. We see how God providentially places us in specific places, situations, and times because he's orchestrating his kingdom. And when we yield ourselves and surrender our lives to him, it makes us connected with God in a powerful way. And so we've been demonstrating and illustrating through the text uh, how God can use you in a powerful way. And so today, uh, I want to call your attention as we uh, started in Acts 16 at the 6th verse. We're going to move on down to the 13th verse of Acts 16. So if you uh, would turn there with me as we prepare to read and reverence the word of God. Acts 16, uh, we're still entertaining and moving with Paul on his second missionary journey uh, as he is about to answer the Macedonian call that we talked about the previous week. Uh, where he's getting ready to set foot for the first time on European soil uh, in a place where God has directed his steps. And that is Acts the 16th. And we're going to begin reading at the 13th verse and concluding at the 15th verse. Acts 16, chapter 16, verse 13. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version as I read aloud. Won't you follow along silently? On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyridia, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. And she persuaded us. I want to preach from the subject, I got away. I got away. Amen. That's going to get you in a minute. Because uh, here's what I want you to know at the outset. Um, I believe that God's word is relevant for all, uh, married and single. Uh, so for married folk, as you hear this word, what God is getting ready to bless you with, uh, it's going to remind you and thank God that you got the mate that you have. And uh, in particular, what we're going to be addressing today is for singles. Uh, it's going to bless you because it encounters the various relationships that you encounter you're going to be able to experience God in a different way uh, through this word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we can do nothing until you come. Make foul of the ground of the souls of your people that the seed of truth would find depth to give way to a new reality in our lives. As we connect crucially with the Christ, that we would, God, know you in a deeper way than we've ever known you before. I pray, God, that as the word is preached, that sinner that doesn't know you in a part of their sin, that as they hear this magnificent word, that God, they would come asking the eternal question, what must I do to be saved? I pray for the saint who's troubled, who's perplexed, who's challenged, that as they hear this word, God, they would be encouraged, they would be lifted up, they would be ready, God, to serve you even with greater fervor. I pray for the saint who's relaxed, who's comfortable, who's learned how to sit instead of serving. I pray, God, that this word would convict them to get off of their flowery bed of ease and begin to serve in this portion of your vineyard. We celebrate you and all that you do and say, now, God, I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit that something unique is going to take place. God, we give you all the room necessary to do what you desire to do. Move us out of the way that you may get in the way, that we may be blessed by your way. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I got away. I got away. My brothers and sisters, it's interesting as we think about the living of life and what we often encounter in the living of life. Uh, many times we live in such a way that we get swept away in nostalgia and regret thinking about what could have been. When we think about it's amazing how we get caught up into recreating a hypothetical uh, situation that really was not realistic to begin with. In other words, many times our imaginations begin to take a fantastic voyage 
and we begin to imagine what could have, should have, would have been, but in reality, it never was. Somewhere we blend, we, blend, we blend our thoughts of the past and romanticize those relationships of the past as though they were something that they really was not. And because of that, we find ourselves struggling with where we are. And sometimes the person that you think got away, in reality, God took away. Let me say that again, because that went over somebody's head. In reality, the person that you think got away, in reality, God took away. Because every now and then and again, you ought to reflect and think back and realize that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And as that's what causes us to approach our text today. Because we find ourselves literally in a theological quandary that I'm not sure of, of how much of Paul's word I can take. I'm not sure if, in fact, I can digest in his epistle uh, who, if I could take it wholesale, and when he declared that I would wish that all of you wouldn't get married, that you would remain single only unless you can't take it. Somebody say, I can't take it. Unless you can't take it, and he says you get ready to burn within. I'm not so sure as to whether Paul really meant that giving that I think I've discovered someplace in this text, and I believe I'll make it light and plain for you today, that I've unearthed some evidence that would suggest that Paul might have gotten close to marriage himself. When you look at the reality and critically examine Acts chapter 16, there are some insights that Paul has a connection and a bond with a woman by the name of Lydia that really has not been investigated. Lydia, my brothers and sisters, could have been a mate for Paul. She has all the things that I think Paul might have needed to help him engage in successful ministry. When you look at verse number 14, it says that she was a seller of purple. And it's interesting to note the fabric that, she, that was selected that comes from a number of colors that fabrics come in, but yet she picks a very priceless and, price and, and high price item, purple cloth. In other words, what she was, nego what she was working in is understanding that purple is the signifies royalty and it suggests that whoever God signifies and whoever God makes and brings into your life, God has a way of allowing you to feel royal when you're connected with them. And this is something that Lydia had the gift to make you feel royal, to make you feel excited, because not only should a person make you feel royal, but they also should carry themselves in a royal way. Lydia is a perfect picture of the P31 woman, just in case you don't know who that is, the Proverbs 31 woman, because she handles her own business. She got her own thing going on. She's her own boss. She knows exactly how to conduct herself in the marketplace. Lydia is a powerful sister. She is in business for herself. And here's something I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that whenever you are engaged with somebody in a relationship, be with somebody that got it going on for themselves. Because if, when you make that connection and you are all they have, you are about to find yourself in a miserable situation. Because here this woman is, she knew how to make uh, things happen. She knew how to put things together. She was a businesswoman, but she also knew how to make a man feel royal. She men she's mentioned twice in the Bible, and here's what you've got to take note of, because there's some kind of connection between Paul and Lydia. There's a connection between them, because as soon as Paul gets to town, he stops by a house. And then, my brothers and sisters, before he leaves town, he stops by a house again. So something has to be said, my brothers and sisters, that would suggest that we got to investigate it further, because she just got saved. Now, there's nothing to indicate in the text that she's a deacon in the church. There's nothing to indicate that she is a trustee in the church. 
surely one of the other members could have allowed Paul and his companions to tra who's traveling to him to come to their house and stay there. But somehow Paul felt obligated that it was a necessity that whenever he came to town, he could not come to town without going by Lydia's house. I'm in verse number 14, and I want to show you something in the text that really calls my curiosity to stand at attention. And the text says that the Lord opened her heart. Now, now, sisters, I, I want to say something to you that, that, that really is going to bless somebody in this room today. The Lord opened her heart and she was as her heart was open. She was open to hear what Paul had to say and she was open to hear and support what Paul was doing. And she got the vision that Paul was laying out and she understood what Paul wanted to do. Paul was trying to and understood what Paul was trying to accomplish. But sisters, we got a problem problem in the text because here when we read in the text we read where her, her heart was open but nowhere do we read in the text where Paul's heart was open hmm think about that for just a moment she she here's the problem and here's the problem that comes a lot of times and that is that you have these imaginary relationships tap your neighbor on the shoulder and said I didn't had some of them you you got an imaginary relationship and you know it's an imaginary relationship how do you know because your heart is open but you can't find their heart but but you didn't conjured up something in your mind that something is going on when really ain't nothing going on but the rent. So at some point in time, here's the thing you got to re recognize that you got to make sure your relationship is on equal footing so that both of your hearts are on the table, not just your hearts on the table and their heart can't be found, but both of your hearts is on the table. So here she is with her open heart and, and does what she can to support the ministry of Paul. And but there's no evidence that Paul ever supported her business. You see, she, see, if you're going to be equally yoked, it, that, that means it's more than just showing up to church together. It, it's more, it's, it's, here's the thing. If you're going to be equally yoked, then, then if I'm giving, you got to give something too. It's got to be a give and give and take and take situation. I can't be the only one giving and giving and giving and I can't find your heart anywhere. I don't know how you feel. Something's wrong with that. It, it, see, it ought to be a reciprocal relationship because you already know my path. You know what my heart is. You know what my passion is. You know what my drive is. You know what ground I stand on. But hold on. Wait a minute. I'm trying to figure out because you already know what I'm holding on and I'm holding Holding down, but in spite of that, I'm holding you down at the same time, but I can't see you sacrificing for me at all. Something is wrong with that picture. Something is out of order. I wish I had somebody that could help me because now something gets twisted while Paul is a man of God, but that doesn't mean that he's the man for her. Oh, I'm going to hurt somebody this morning. I hope I won't hurt you too bad because I just said something because please don't miss this. Just because he carries the word and is faithful in church, that doesn't mean that, that y'all on the same path. Because you can be in church, but you can be on two different paths. And you got to understand that you need to be on the same direction, on the same page. Because, see, don't let these hallelujah heads around here throw you off just because they're shouting in church. But do they work for you? Let me say that again. Just because they shouted in church, do they work for you? In other words, is the situation compatible that we can get along, but not just to go along to get along, but we can show sure enough get along. So if you can't work for me after worship, then I better take my Bible and sit someplace else because I got to make sure that we on the same page. So the text says, my brothers and sisters, that in Acts chapter 16, verse 15, that she constrained him to stay. Now, that, that's what the Bible says in order. She, in other words, she had to convince him to stay. She tried to make a situation uh, that he could feel comfortable in, in a place for him to stay. And here's what I need to say, tell somebody today. Don't you dare ever beg anybody to stay with you. Oh, my God, I can't hear nobody in here. See, see if, if they want to leave, let them leave. 
if they threaten to leave, open up the door and say, listen, you're going to try to threaten me. You must not know about me. I, I can get somebody else. I, you ain't the only one in town. Don't you dare try to beg them. So, so the text says that she constrained him to stay. Look at the person next to you and say, listen, I got too much going on to do something like that. I got too much going on. I, I understand my value. I'm valuable. See, what? don't, don't get caught up into that. No, that ain't what I'm about. I'm too valuable to try to beg you to stay with me. See, you see, had you caught me some years ago, you could have caught me like that. But now I have been through hell and back. I ain't going out like that. I got a different kind of swagger about me. So you can't approach me like that. You want to leave? Go ahead. Here's the door. And don't let the doorknob hit you where the good Lord don't want, won't bless you. Here's what I want to share with you. You got it going on. So you got to stay in your position. And here it is, my brothers and sisters. I'm trying to figure out something. Notice something. Lydia's heart is open, but there's no evidence that Paul's heart is open. So the critical question that you got to ask, why is it that God didn't open up Paul's heart as he opened Lydia's heart? This is going to mess somebody up. Here it is. Lydia's heart is opened up, but Paul's heart is not. So see, sometimes God would not allow you to fall in love or God would not allow you to catch some feelings for a person sometimes God won't allow you to get close to the person watch this because you really don't know everything about them you don't know everything about them so God won't allow you to get close to them because there are some things God knows about them that you have not discovered yet so he's trying to keep you from getting your heart hurt because he knows you can't take one more heartache you can't take one more you can't go for the okie doke no more you can't feed you can't deal with no more games so God says I'm gonna close the heart why does God not open Paul's heart so that he could fall in love with Lydia and 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 and, and this is think about this. This woman had it going on. She had her own business. She was an industrious sister. She was making moves. She was a shot caller. She was a baller. She, she got her own house. She was finding her own way. She's supporting the ministry. She got everything on paper that Paul would want to have in a woman and a wife. But Paul, God does not open the heart of Paul. And, and here's something I want to show you. This woman, Lydia, uh, shows up Watch this twice in the Bible and both times it's in Acts chapter 16. And let me show you this. This is going to mess you up. When you find Lydia, uh, we find Lydia when Paul comes to town. And we find Lydia when Paul is getting ready to leave town. But that's all in Acts chapter 16. But you got to notice where we don't find Lydia. We, we don't find Lydia. There's no picture of Lydia. Guess when? When Paul goes to prison, I'm right in the text. See, 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 I'm not skipping anything. We, we don't find Lydia when he goes to prison. All right, see, let me see if I can help you. See, you don't need somebody who's just going to be with you when, you, when, when, you, when you're making moves. And you, you need somebody to be with you who's going to be there when you feel like life is stuck. Why you can't move and you ain't going nowhere. I need somebody in the room who understands. I don't want you showing up when I'm on the come up. I need you showing up when I'm going down so you can help lift me up. I don't need you when everything is going well. I need you when things are trying that you can push me into success. So Lydia, where are you, boo? Where are you, girl? I'm in prison. See, Acts 16, 23, where are you, Lydia? Where, where, how come you ain't put no money on my books yet, Lydia? Where, where are you, Lydia? Where are you when I got my car note and I ain't got nothing? Where are you when I got laid off? Where are you when, when my money is funny and my change is strange? Where are you? Where's you? Where are you in response to my need when my house is getting ready to get foreclosed on? Can, can I say this to everyone in here this morning? And that is simply this. God is not going to send you somebody who's not going to stand with you when you get ready to make your next move. But God is going to send somebody who's going to be in your corner. Not only in there are going to be in your corner, they're going to be with you when you ain't got nothing to help you to come on up. Would you look at the person next to you and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. Would you look at that person and say, no, nah, he ain't talking about you. He talking about me. I know that's right. I ain't trying to get with no fair weather friend. I need somebody who's a tsunami friend. When I'm going through a storm, they're going to be right there with me. When the waves are over my head, they're going to help to come. 
cover me. I need somebody who's going to be with me through thick and thin, who's going to know that the best is yet to come. But here's what's crazy, y'all. Paul, Paul had to find out that Lydia didn't have it in her to stand with him while he was in prison because he got if he got caught up with Lydia before then, uh, he would have missed the fact that she was not going to be around when he got when he was shipwrecked. He would have missed the fact that she wasn't going to be around when, when he received his 39 lashes. She would not have been around to testify with him before he was before Pop Fetus. So here it is, my brothers and sisters. Every now and then and again, God will give you a clue and an indication that the person who you with that you're not supposed to be with. But if you so silly and so ignorant that you miss the signs because you so caught up into the personality of the person instead of being caught up in the Christ where you can see who he is or who she is, then that's on you. But God's going to give you an indication that this person is not the one. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, are you the one or shall I keep on looking? I know I got to keep looking because you ain't it. You are not it. Now, here it is. I, I can Here it is. I just can't badger Lydia, y'all, because we got a whole part into accountability we got to hold Paul into accountability because the Bible says that a man who findeth the wife findeth a good thing but Paul is so caught up into his assignment he's so caught up into his career he's so caught up in the writing books he's so caught up into being gifted that he forgot about here it is that that you cannot just love with your head but you got love with your heart in other words here it is you so smart you silly in other words, you can't just have all this head knowledge and not willing to share your feelings. God gave you too much to deal with to, uh, to be alone. You can't make it all by yourself. You need to expose some of the hurt and pain in your heart and let that sister, let that brother know, listen, I'm here to help you on the come up, not to bring you down. You got to open up and start talking about some things. What happens, my brothers and sisters, when you share your business, but they never share their feelings? I mean, you put all your stuff on the table and you telling them everything that's happened in your life. You talk about stuff that happened when you was a child and you talk about how you grew up and and they. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, did that happen? They ain't sharing nothing about what's going on with them. What happens when you see you need affirmation about what's going on with you? You got to open up and begin to share who you are because God says, listen, it means that if you're going to share, you're going to share. You got to open your life to begin to expose the reality that you ain't perfect, that you ain't got it going on, that you hurt sometimes, that you get down sometimes. You feel lonely sometimes and you're looking for somebody that's compatible that y'all can make it to together tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say I need somebody like that I need somebody like that somebody else ought to say I'm glad I got somebody like that I thank God I got a mate that loves me and nurtures me and cares so here it is she he stops by Lydia's house and and even after she does everything here's what blows my mind uh, everything to make Paul feel comfortable uh, after she make, does everything to help him and his compadres to feel good in the facility where she resided, uh, he still leaves. Uh, th th this ain't for everybody, but, but what happens when you've done everything? I mean, you've crossed every T and dotted every I. You, you've created a non-stressful environment. So when they come home, everything will be, you so supportive. They, they cannot find a better person than you. And after all of that, they still leave. God said, when they leave, don't you dare chase them down. When they leave, don't you dare text them anymore. When they leave, don't you dare Instagram them with a picture of you smiling saying, I miss you. Don't you dare send them an email message. Delete them Negroes from your phone and your de take defriend them from your Facebook page. Why? Because if they don't want to stay with you, let them go. Tell your neighbor on the shoulder and say, I need to help you with this one. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. And notice something, my brothers and sisters. As soon as Paul leaves this good sister. He ends up in prison. 
As soon as he leaves, see, see, y- y- y'all ain't gonna like me too much today because see, every now and again, the person that was supposed to know you and know your value and understand that you was in their corner, when they leave you, they got caught up in some stuff that they didn't understand. Had they stayed with you, they'd have never experienced it. Had he stayed, my brothers and sisters, Paul might not have gone to prison. Had he stayed, Lydia might have not, he never, he may have never connected with Silas in the way that he did. And, and I'm getting ready to help somebody in here. God allowed Paul to go to prison. Watch this because I'm getting ready to flip it. Look at this. He allowed him to go to prison because he wanted to help Paul get set free from the bondage of being with somebody he was not supposed to be with. Y'all going to make me preach harder in here today. Let, let me see if I can help you with this because, see, 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 if this is going to help somebody. Please, Paul is locked up because his emotions are conflicted about how he feels about somebody that God has not ordained. And you're with somebody right now that God has not ordained and your feelings are conflicted because when you come to church, you hear the preached word that I should not be unequally yoked. But yet you find yourself emotionally attached to somebody you should have never hooked up with. But here's what God is saying. Even if I had to put you in a prison cell to take you away, I'm going to help you to change your heart. Lord, here's what I love about God. All you have to do is just pray to God, Lord, you're going to have to free me because listen I didn't try to get away from this thing all by myself but I, I it's beyond my will it's out of my will and I know they're not in your will God you're gonna have to help me and God all my friends they don't understand me it's because listen they got money they they, they they take care of me they love me but and support me but they don't really know God that I don't know how to get out of this but God you're gonna have to give me a way of escape And the Bible says that Paul and Silas was praying and at midnight as they prayed, what happened? God began to shake things up. And I can I can tell a few of you all who are in this room. God says, listen, when you get ready to pray and shout, here's what's getting ready to happen under the anointing that's in this house. Whatever that you're connected to that's not of me, I'm getting ready to cut it loose from you. Whatever you're with that you're not supposed to be with, God says, I'm getting ready to open up that door. He said, when you give God this glory, here's what I want you to understand. That you are that the system that you've been connected to that's been taking you down God is getting ready to pull you out of it in other words God is going to get you out of it because you know that when praises go up blessings come down I need for you to see this in scripture Acts 16 is here's what I need you to read this and understand this when you get home and that is when Paul and Silas begin to praise God and give him glory I got to show you this Paul and Silas begin to sing and give him praise watch this the doors of the prison cell begin to open up Okay, here's what's crazy. The power of a praiser has seen, been seen and demonstrated when you are in a painful situation that God can transform it through his power and he can open up doors not only just for you, but for everybody that's connected to you. In other words, the people who are in close proximity that don't even get it just yet, they are getting ready to get released from a relationship that you getting ready to get delivered from. But you got to get out of yourself and begin to praise God you got to let go and let God in your spirit in other words God said every time you open up your mouth I'm getting ready to open the door and set somebody free I'm getting ready to open the door and deliver somebody who's around you but more importantly I'm going to deliver you but here's what you got to do you got to open up your mouth and begin to praise him I can't hear nobody I dare you to shout like everybody on your rows getting ready to be delivered I dare you to shout like you getting ready to be set free God I know the person and I'm with I'm not supposed to be with but I'm going to shout until I get that feeling off of me. I'm going to shout until I get delivered from that perspective that I just got to be with them. God I feel a change taking place. I feel a shift getting ready to happen in my life. I got to change your perspective of your thought process because immediately my brothers and sisters and instinctively subconsciously when I talked about uh, 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 that, that I got away you, you thought I was referring to to Lydia but I wasn't referring to Lydia I'm talking about Paul because see some of you are oh God a retroactive praise because of the person you could have been with but you got away (laughs) 
Oh my God, you didn't hear what I just said. Somebody ought to give God praise in here today for the Negro that you could have been with, but God let you get away. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, I got away. I got away. Thank God I got away. See, you no, I got away. I think God, wait a minute. You don't know what I was with. You don't know that psychopath that I almost married. You don't know that insecure Negro that I almost hooked up with. You don't know how crazy that sister was stalking me everywhere I was going. You don't know. That's why I give God the praise because I got away. And what I love about God, when you get away and you see them several years later, they look like eight miles of bad road. You ought to praise God right now because you got away. I see, I see, I shot all by myself because see, you don't know what I was in. You, you don't know what I was getting ready to be with. But I thank God he let me get away. I shout every day that he gave me the blessing of my life that I got away from somebody crazy. I got away. And see, what, what I love about this is because, see, you, 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 you can be seated. You can be seated. And here's the thing you got to understand. And here's what you need to understand. And that is that you literally, because you're sitting here today, you got away. It, but, but before I close out, I got to take you to, to verse number 40. Because, see, verse number 40 has something in it because it lets us know something about Paul. Paul gets out of prison and to show you uh, what kind of dude Paul is, he, he's gonna show everybody uh, that what happened to him, he's not hurt after he gets out of prison. When he gets out, let, let me show you what kind of dude Paul is. Even though he was in prison and she didn't put any money on his books, even though he was in prison and she didn't come visit him. He didn't get any letters from her. He didn't get any conversation from her. He says, I'm all right. What you didn't do, it didn't hurt me. I'm all right. Because the Bible says the first place he goes when he gets out, he goes back to Lydia's house. And when he goes back to Lydia's house, he's going back to simply say, listen, I got away and I'm all right. My mind is still together. My heart ain't hurting anymore. My, line, my mind is focused more than it's ever been because I realized I was never to be with you in the first place. I, I realized what God did with me when I was in prison. I didn't let prison take my time. I used the time to make me. In other words, I learned something while I was locked up. I learned that God has a plan for my life. And I came by on my way to heaven to let somebody know the reason why God took you away is to let you know I'm all right. Would you tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, I'm all right. I'm all right. I ain't hurting from my past. I'm not hurting from what they tried to do. I'm not hurting from the lie. I'm not hurting from the mistakes. I'm all right. Somebody didn't get what I just said. I said, listen, I ain't hurting from what you did. I know you didn't come see me, but I ain't mad at you. I'm loving on you in spite of that. Why? Because I'm a child of God. Because see, God opened up your heart, but he also opened up my heart. He opened up my heart that I can love my enemies. I can love those who despitefully use me. I can love those who try to trick me into a trick bag. I can love those who want to talk and put my name down I can love you in spite of it I can even come to your house I can sit down and have a meal with you well how do you know because my bible says that my lord my shepherd he will prepare a table in the presence of my enemies so you can hate on me all you want I'm gonna sit down and eat with you and say ain't the lord good well, how do you know he's good? Because goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's what I love about God. When you got God on your side, he's more than the world against you. Who can come against you? Can't nobody, can't nobody get do you like the Lord. Well, how do you know? Because I read somewhere, even though I might be in pain, even though I might be putting myself to sleep by crying all night, weeping may endure, but a night 
but joy comes in the morning. Well, how do you know you can make it? Because I read somewhere, even though I'm going through all of this, I know and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. Well, how do you know it's going to work out? Because what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Well, how do you know it's going to work out? I can testify myself. God has been good. He's delivered me. I got away. I'm set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. I'm free. Yes, I am. I got away. Yes. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. I've been set free. I got away. Yes. 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 He delivered me. He can deliver you. You don't have to die where you are. This is a jump off spot for where God is getting ready to take you. The devil is a liar. You can get out of that unholy situation. You can be delivered from those sins. And watch what I love about God when you pray to him. Because the Bible says that she was a worshiper of God, but she didn't have the full knowledge of God. But it wasn't until she heard the gospel priest. Let me tell you, because maybe you missed the gospel. The gospel is the good news. It's the charisma. It's the death, burial, resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you know he died for you, he was buried for you, but he didn't stay dead because the Bible says on the third day, he got up with all power. Do you really know what that means? Let God open up your heart so you can feel the power of God. Because that's where transformation takes place. Because the Bible said her whole household got saved. How do you think all the mother Negroes got saved? It's because God opened her heart. There's some people in your household that need to be saved. But you won't open up your heart to God. You're still locked in your own prison. In a relationship that God has been trying to deliver you from. And God is saying today is your day of deliverance. I didn't know you were going to be here. But God knew. He tailor made this moment just for you. It's not a coincidence that you're here. It's not an accident. God ordered your steps carefully. He providentially placed you here under his divine sovereignty so that you could hear this word and you can go home a different way. If you go home the same way you came in, that's your fault because God is opening up the way for you to walk through, to experience him afresh. I need you to hear this because this was my meditation for this past week that God would open your heart, that you would receive him into your heart because when you have Christ in your heart he makes all the difference in the world because all the money that Lydia had didn't make a difference she had it all before but it wasn't until Christ entered her heart that she was able to now see the reality of serving a true and living God and I believe God brought you here to open your heart and if you hear and you feel that same presence and power that was available to Lydia, that was available to Paul, it's available to you. As the congregation stands, I just believe that you're here. Just go ahead, take a step of faith and say, Pastor, I believe that you was preaching to me. That, that, that word was for me, oh my God. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know who I was attached to. But God sent you through that word to deliver me. And I refuse to go home the same way. I'm running down the aisle. I'm going to give my hand to the counselor, but I'm giving my heart to God. If you're here today, praise the Lord. Come on, my brother. Praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise. I believe that you're here. You ought to come while you have a chance. Don't let this moment pass you by.
praise the Lord. Come on, my brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you're here. You ought to come. You ought to come while you have a chance. This is your time. This is your moment. Take that step of faith. You ought to come right now. Don't you hesitate. Don't wait. This is your moment. Don't procrastinate. This is your moment. God is speaking to you. Praise the Lord. Come on, my sister. Praise the Lord. Come on. I know you're here. I feel you in this room. I feel you in this room. Praise the Lord. Go on. Be with your mother, my brother. Amen. If you're here today, take that step of faith. I feel you here. I feel you here. I know you need to move. Don't let the devil keep you where you are. God is speaking to you right now. He's opening the door for you to come. And you need to come while you have a chance. Don't procrastinate. This is your season. This is your moment. This is the moment of transformation. This is the moment that God wants to work in your life. Won't you come? I was walking in darkness. You ought to come. You shine your light on me. Take that step of faith. You came and you shared your love with me. Won't you come? And now I've been set free. Oh, you're my savior, my provider. You ought to come. You're the lover of my soul. I adore you and I praise you. You're my everything. This is your time. This is your moment. Lord, I really love your name. God is speaking to you. You're worthy to be praised. Oh, Jehovah, you're mine all in all. I will bless you in all my days. You're my Savior, my provider. You're the Lord. Hold on, hold on for just a second. Hold on for just a second. I, I, need to, I need somebody to hear this. Because God brought you all, all the way here. And I don't need right now just, just the music playing real soft. But I don't want anything else disturbing what God is getting ready to speak into your life. And that is simply this. God is sharing with you that the relationship that you've been in was not designed for you. It was never meant to be, but you've been so attached to it, emotionally, psychologically, physically, and you know that it's wrong. And God is saying he wants to deliver you today. And you may, let me hear me on this, it doesn't even mean that you're in the relationship right now, but the attachment of the relationship because it's still active in your life even though you're not with the person. We gonna pray, come on, I know, we gonna pray for you right here because deliverance is gonna take place in here, amen. And you're not the only one, sister. Some others need to walk down the aisle because I'm just believing deliverance is getting ready to take place. It's not a coincidence that you showed up in church today. We gonna pray for you right in this place. It's the attachment of the relationship. It's what you need to get out of your system. It's what God wants to deliver you from. Because let me tell you who you are just so you can walk and you won't make any mistakes about it. You can't even sleep at night sometimes because they are still on your mind. And, and, and sometimes you're with another person and you're still thinking about them. And you're trying to figure out how is it God, can I get them out of my system? God, I'm trying to see other people. I'm trying to go to school. I'm trying to do this. I'm, I'm trying to get another job, but I just can't get them out of my system. I'm trying to do all of these things, but they still seem to be in my mind. And God is saying, only I can deliver you from that because you've been trying to do it through every other means. But God says today, because you showed up in this house, that deliverance is in the house. But you got to walk in faith and it's going to happen for you. Just as I'm about to pray for you, because God's 
stop the order of what he was getting ready to do to rescue you from where you were. And that's the kind of God we serve. He ain't playing. He's for real. And he's serious about his children. And he brought you here today not to go home the same way, but to be delivered. I believe there's two more people that need to walk. I feel you. You just need to come real quick because God ain't taking a whole lot of time. There's two more people that need. You got it. You know you got it. Praise the Lord. I feel you. Come on. Praise the Lord. I feel you in here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Deliverance is getting ready to take place. Y'all scoot up some. Amen. Don't be close. Don't be afraid of this altar. This is where the power is. This is where the power of the gospel that goes forth that's going to transform your life. You didn't walk down here because you wanted to look cute. You didn't want to walk down here because you wanted everything. You walked down here because you want deliverance and you want healing from an unholy tie that God, that the enemy has entrapped you in. And God brought you here today for that deliverance. Bow your head and close your eyes. We believe God is getting ready to move in this place. Father in heaven, we pray right now. We pray, God, in the powerful ministry of the Holy Spirit that is in this place. The spirit that opened the heart of Lydia, the spirit that released the doors of Paul when he was in prison. The same spirit, God, that allowed Paul to go back to the situation he was in to say, I'm all right. God, you did something in his mind when he was in the prison. And I'm praying for my brother, my sister that's standing before me. I'm praying for their mind, God, that you would release them from that relationship that's been, they've been attached to emotionally. God, they've been attached to physically, that they've been attached to even spiritually because they placed this person above you. You said, thou shalt have no other God before me. And now, God, they recognize the heirs of their ways. And so we pray for them right Right now that as they confess God by walking down the aisle where they are mentally and emotionally psychologically physically that God they're surrendering it all to you right now in the name of Jesus and as they surrender God I pray that you would open up their heart open up their heart to receive the power of the gospel into their lives the power of Jesus in their lives that they no longer have to suffer from the pain of the past that they can walk into the freshness of the new day God you're creating a new thing in their lives and I thank you for allowing them to walk down the aisle and take steps of faith not knowing what was going to take place but I believe deliverance is happening right now in the name of Jesus the mind is opening to a new reality that God that you can only feel God you created in us a vacuum that only you can feel God empty them of anything that's unholy empty them of any sin that besets them empty them God of themselves get them out of the way that you can fill them with your Holy Spirit and as you fill them with your Holy Spirit God give them the power to be able to sleep tonight without thinking about a past relationship without thinking about a past mistake that they can live in the newness of life that they can live in the now God that they don't have to live in the yesterday but they can live in the now with a hope for tomorrow I thank you for what's about to come forth God I believe that you didn't bring us here by accident or coincidence but through your divine providence just as you ordered the steps of that eunuch to meet Philip in the desert you ordered our steps this day God that now we've met at the altar now transformation is taking place hearts are being changed minds are being mended hearts are being brought back together lives are being renewed spirits are being revived souls are connecting to you God in ways that have never connected before because you are our creator you know the number of hair on our heads you know everything about us and so we surrender it all to you all to you we surrender everything we got everything we about it all belongs to you oh god that as i'm being freed right now and as i'm being delivered every person that's under the sound of my voice that's taking the initiative to walk forth and the only reason they took that step is because you first took the first step you took the initiative to bring us back to you, to reconcile, reconcile us back to you. You took the initiative so that you died for our sins, that we might have the gift of eternal life. You took the initiative. Now, God, I pray that as we open our hearts to you, that, God, you alone reside in our hearts, that you feel that empty place, that you feel it tonight, God, when, when they're all by themselves at home, that even when they're, they're tempted by the devil to pick up the phone again, when they're tempted by the devil who may even call again. Tempted by the devil who may send a text message. God, I pray that they're able to ignore it and say, I ain't going out like that. I've been delivered from that. 
God, I pray right now that your power, ministry of the Holy Spirit, would reside in them all day long, all week long, from this day going forward. That they no longer have to live in the past, but they can live in the now. We celebrate you and honor you, God, in all that you're getting ready to do, all that you've done. Not what you're getting ready to do. You did it today. You opened up their hearts. You opened up their minds, God. They don't have to return the way they walk down the aisle. When they go back to their seat, God, just confirm to them in their spirit that, God, they already healed. Get, let them walk in their deliverance, God. But not just walk in it. Let them stay in their deliverance. Because it's not enough just to be delivered on Sunday. You got to live in your deliverance. God, let them not go back to the ways of their past. But let them walk into the newness of their future. We celebrate what you've done already. We honor you for what you're getting ready to do. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. And let the people of God say together, I am delivered. I am healed. I am set free. In Jesus' name, give him some praise. Because you are what you say you are. You confessed it out of your mouth. Praise God. You can go back to your seat, a free woman and a free man. I'm walking in my deliverance. I'm walking in my healing. I'm walking in the authority and power of God. No longer will I live like I used to live. I'm living in a new life. And I'm living in a new way. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Ain't God good?